County on Saturday. Um, but I don't think it's any surprise that the two games when things really clicked for Celtic, um, Johansson was at the, the centre of it and done very well and showed what he can do, i.e. the team was pressing, they're constantly pressing Ross County, they've done that, certainly first half was very good, second half they took their foot off the pedal, but um, I think we really got a good insight into what Celtic can do under Dyla and that we've not seen that since the Dundee United game in the league. Um, and hopefully, it's not another false dawn again, but hopefully it can continue. Chris Samani? I think, just to touch on what Louis just said, I think it was really important. Obviously, Dyla just needed a result. I think it was really important also to back up that the Dundee United game wasn't a blip, wasn't a one-off. Because I remember earlier in the season, we were on the podcast and... The Dundee United game was played, and then for a few weeks afterwards, we kind of harped back to it as a as a, as an idea of what we could and should be. I think it was really important that we got to a level of attacking football that was as close to that as possible. Um, you're absolutely right about Johansson. Further up the field, I think he just looks a lot more influential. Um, the, the thing about Johansson is he was really good at points as well under Lennon last season. I mean, there was guys talking about Johansson and how good he was and the fact that you didn't really miss Joel Edley when he left because Johansson was that impressive at points last season. But he was that he's been that bad sometimes this season you were thinking, wait a minute, what's happened? I mean, it's not like he he's just been poor. At times he's been deplorable. Yeah. Maribor at home, for instance, is the one that sticks out in my mind. How many times he gave the ball away. Exactly. How many times the guy best place passes and put us completely into trouble. And you were kinda Scratching your head to say, well, is this guy absolutely pish? Um, but it, it Saturday was a timely reminder of how influential he can be on the team. And I think him being Norwegian, having played under Dyla and being his man, I think if we can get him ticking, I think that might be key to Dyla being a success as a Celtic manager. Yeah, absolutely. I thought he was just one of the best players on the pitch uh, by a mile. I was impressed. <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of him anyway. I thought Lustig gave a balance to the team. The difference that Lustig made at right back was unbelievable, and I think we really should need to bear that in mind. The imbalance we've had with Ambrose, and Dyla's not really had any choice but to play him, but the imbalance we've had with that lunatic playing there it can really be un- underestimated. If we can keep Lustig fit and playing at right back, uh, the, I think you know things are going to be a lot easier for us. I think the other thing as well is that Matthews is back, um, Fisher is back training again. I don't, I can't see any way that Ambrose would get back into that team unless there was a big crisis with injuries again. I mean We'd that balance not back anyway. No, no. I mean that that balance should be there now, and I think I don't. I don't even think. Right, fair enough. Lustig was very good, brilliant, but. I think it's just having a proper right back there that back. sorted out a hell of a lot of the issues. I think if Ambrose, uh, if if Matthews was in that position right for the start, I think we would have looked better as well mm-hmm. because it just sorted things out. I mean, how many times you know, Izzy would be driving, you know, when Ambrose was playing, Izzy would be driving forward and Ambrose would be just not even past the halfway line, and you're thinking you need to drive as a unit because if you don't, then it is unbalanced. Which means that our, you know, central mid, um, central left side midfielder isn't pushing up because he's trying to cover for him, and it is just simple balance that that, that Lustig brought to the game. The amount, the amount of times that Ambrose would go forward and lose the ball, it was absolutely unreal. Which put the the the, the rest of the defence uh, all at odds. Do you know what I mean? I mean, balance is the exact word. Lustig knows when to go forward and he knows when to sit back. Ambrose just. Just doesn't. You yeah, know? he can also cross Lustig. <laughs> you know, what I mean, Ambrose. Yeah, how many times has he just hit it out? At times, you know, he's just he's just terrible. The other the other thing with uh, Lustig, I, I noticed especially first half when we looked so good, was not he, he. There was more to his game as a position than just going forward, staying back. 
which is what Ambrose more or less does. Yeah. Sometimes he will go forward and, 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 and try and be like a winger, but he doesn't know what to do when he gets that high up the pitch. And then he thinks, right, I should just stay here and, and be a defender. Whereas Lustig was happy to kind of go three quarters of the way up, play some passes, come back and try and link up play. Yeah. And and he just understands everything that's going on on that side of the pitch so much better than Ambrose could. See, when, I mean, the thing is, we've mentioned this before in the podcast, the first time the notion of Izzy, eh, sorry, Izzy, um, FA being a right-back was at the World Cup, and he was shite there as well. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's not as if you watched the World Cup and seen him play for Nigeria and thought, oh, you can there's something Ash. there. I mean, Lineker and, and Lennon were pushing themselves laughing at him, just rampaging up the wing and then, you know, as you say, kicking the ball out or whatever. Yeah. And then when he came back, he came back and done it for us and you were thinking, Christ, man. But as we say, that was a horrific run of injuries we had at right back, which is by far our strongest position in terms of depth. Hopefully we don't see Effie back there anytime soon, if ever, please. I, I think there's a certain level of, uh, just to kind of pick up on what you were saying, Lloyd, there's a certain level of psychology if you look at if you're a you know fullback or a winger playing for Ross County and you're up against Ambrose, you look at him and you can see that he doesn't know what he's doing, and instantly you think to yourself, "I've got the beating of him here." Before a ball's kicked, whereas if you look at Lustig and you you look how awesome he is and how handsome and how happy he's probably got some really cool tattoos that we've not seen yet, um, then you think to yourself, "Right, this guy is a fullback. He as soon he can catch me out here." And I think there is a certain le- level of just psychology, seeing mm-hmm. the right player in the right position. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, who else impressed you? Um, I made the point before we, we kicked off. Um, he scored the goal, McGregor. Um, he didn't do a lot other than that. Is that harsh? Maybe I'm being harsh. No, I, I would agree. I, I would agree. Too. Thinking now back on the game, I can't really think of of, of much that he was involved. He, he, in. he had a couple of little points in the second half where he he took a man on and he beat he him and to the byline he should have scored he should have scored in the second half remember he was one on one with a keeper yeah yeah and he should have put that away but yeah we've said it we have spoke about it and whether he should be he dropped and I don't know I, I thought maybe, maybe, are we expected too much of him because he has only 20 I think I think we maybe are. I think one of the things he needs to learn is to impose himself in a game a bit more. Yeah. And that, that can come because we've seen him beat men. We can see he can score goals. We know that he's a talented player. He's got what it takes in his locker. The next step is imposing himself more, beating more men and being more consistent. I think we need to bear in mind that he is only 20 and that could come. And as I say... Maybe Dyla should use him a bit more sparingly. Yeah, um, he's. I, I think I'm. I'm guilty of of uh, personally kind of getting it into my head that he's going to be like James Forrest, and he's a different player. He's not a winger. He's, he's not a a, a pacey winger who wants to try and beat a man. I don't think. Yeah. I think he can do that sometimes, but I, I don't think that's what he would he would like to do. I think he likes to. To play a pass and run into space, feed off people. Is he more like Aidan McGeady? Than Forrest? Yeah, possibly. I think Aidan ended up, he started off always wanting to go outside of a man. And then, as things progressed, he, he was increasingly coming inside, always getting inside. Obviously, he was ushered inside a lot of the time to try and stop what he was doing but he, I think he's got a, he's got a disgusted look in his face why I've, have you got a disgusted look in your face it doesn't it reminds me more of Commons it doesn't remind me at all of McGeady well let, let him finish let, let, let finish your point I, I just think um, I think McGregor is similar in that way that um, he would rather play um, inward Rather than trying to go out wide and, and, and go right to the byline. Yeah. Um, I think he's more direct um, in, well, that, in that sense. That, that kind of covers your point about him being more like uh, Commons. Yeah, I mean, he's not as creative as McGeady. Um, and as Louis said, he's, he's, he's happier going more central. Um, he's a better finisher than McGeady. Um, I'll certainly give him that. But I think that's where the, the comparison ends. I, I think it does remind me a bit of Commons and, as in... He, he, he might not do much, but he'll pop up with a goal. Um, I, I just, 
I, 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 I don't know about McGregor, do you know what I mean? I, I, I think, I'm not sure what he is. I mean, he, he, has a, he has been scoring goals for us, but has he particularly been creative since he's been in the team? Would you say he's made a lot of goals? Do you know what I mean? It's like... He's got five goals. Five of the goals have all come, come away from home. Right. Uh, f- I think three or four of them are in European terms of European football. Yep. So he's scoring at a high level. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I, I, I think we're all so desperate for Celtic to have Scottish or Glaswegian players, or just you know Scottish players in that team who know what it's like to play after you know the, some of the crap we've had with you know your puckies and Borichters and stuff like that. We just want Scottish players playing, you know, who, who know what it's like to play for Celtic. Because we're so up for that and so determined, maybe we defend them a bit too much. We try to maybe see through their kind of. Deficiencies. Deficiencies. I'm not saying that he is. A, I think he's a talented player. I've just yet to see what everyone else is raving about at this point. I'm to see. I'm still to see how he got a Scotland call up ahead of some of the Dundee United boys who've been doing it, you know, for the last two or three seasons. Mm. Um, but that's that's what I stand on. I think I, we all want him to be successful at the end of the day. But I mean, I, I, I think it's, no, a hard, it's a hard one. I think so. I mean, see if if he said at the start of the season. You know, we would he would have played so many games and he'd have done what he's done. You'd have taken it. Um, I just don't think he's a, a, a really a, a vital cog in our team right now. I don't think we're anything. I, I don't think we're down when he doesn't play. Exactly. But, I, I, I think if you said if you looked at the team lineup and McGregor wasn't there, you wouldn't immediately shite yourself. Like if Brown wasn't there, or if uh, you know, uh, which just he's, him lustig. He's maybe simply just the best God. player. For, He's the best player that is available for the position that he's playing in. What? Who would go in his place in that kind of right side of the three behind the the striker? That's a good point. There's nobody, you know, knocking down the door of the first team to, to take to take his place just now. I mean, a lot of the wide players that we've brought in have been shite. So yeah. I mean, you can't you can't really say anybody's staking a claim. For a position in front of him. But also, just to make this, we're not getting on his back at all because, you know, we, we do want him to be successful. Um, it's just I, I've yet to see what, you know, he's scoring goals. It's it's hard. He, here's a question, actually, um, we got today, which kind of ties in a little bit. It's from Paul Moody. His uh, Twitter handle is at Sword of Reason. Uh, give him a follow. He asks, does it come and fit into this team? Um, the movement on Saturday... Um, was excellent, the pass and pacing they had without him. Does he fit into the team? I think I think it's I think it's difficult. There's arguments for both sides and I've said before and we've all talked about how he he pro- possibly doesn't fit in the team. That he doesn't fit into the system quite as much. D- uh, Dialer wants players who are going to work hard, constantly be pressing, and and you can't have luxury players like Commons who are not going to get into that pressing and do the work for the team because if if unless everybody does it, then it kind of defeats the purpose and it, and it can uh, you can have kind of holes in it detrimental. But in saying that. There's been times this season when Commons has came into the team and we've looked instantly better. We've created more chances and he's showed us what he can do. So I think it's I think it's a difficult a, a long term he doesn't fit in the system, but you can't argue with the effect that he has on the team when he does come in. Yeah. But he's possibly still a bit of a luxury, I think. He gets important goals. Um We've got the the Zagreb game being being the last time where he, he stepped up to the plate. Um, another thing as well is he's the he's the darling of the Scottish press when it comes to Celtic. If Tyler doesn't play Commons, guys like Keevans and all these Hearts and Sutton. What, these we'll worn, get to them in a minute, by the way. Well, these worn out hacks and, and pundits. You know, the, a lot of them are light lining up to take a boot at Dyla now. Dylan certainly deserves criticism for what he's done so far, but the likes of Commons, ah, oh, he's not playing Chris Coy, doesn't he know what he's doing and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, guys that actually go every week and watch the game know that Chris Commons, although a fine player, 
can influence the games. At times, offers very little to nothing. As you said, he can be a luxury player. You've got him in the team because he could pop up with that goal. If he doesn't pop up with that goal, you've got a player who, for a long periods of the game, hasn't contributed. Um, I think ongoing, I don't think, still don't think... Da-